Besides helping us in staging the cancer, the PET scan is also extremely useful in helping us to determine whether a patient is responding to treatment or not responding to treatment. Again, I illustrate with an example. In this case, this gentleman presented to us with a fairly large tumour in the lung. All right. We could technically have gone in directly and resected this lesion. But we chose to give the patient chemotherapy up front to downsize the tumour. The advantage of this is, number one, we'll be able to shrink the tumour down and thereby make the surgery easier. And number two, we will be able to establish whether the treatment that we are giving the patient and the chemotherapy that we're going to give after the operation, whether it's actually effective against the cancer. Once the cancer has been removed, you do not have a marker. You can happily give the chemotherapy one cycle, second cycle, third cycle, fourth cycle, but really, you're shooting blind. But when you shoot before the target has been removed, you can actually see whether you're hitting the target or not. And this is a very good example. In this situation, you can see a very large tumour in the right lung. And after the chemotherapy, you can see that the lesion has shrunken significantly in size. The advantage of approaching it in this manner is, number one, as I said, to downsize the tumour. Number two, to establish its effectiveness, the effectiveness of the chemotherapy. And so the PET scan is very useful, as you can see. Sometimes, all right, you give a chemotherapy, you will see that the tumour has shrunken even on a CT scan. You can already know that your chemotherapy is working. But sometimes, the size of the tumour may stay the same. But the metabolic activity, in other words, how much FDG it uptakes, actually has gone down to nothing or it has diminished significantly. So the PET scan has the advantage of both telling you structurally, anatomically, whether it has reduced in size, and also metabolically, whether it has shown improvement. This is a patient whom we saw for metastatic lung cancer. You can see the patient had a very big tumour that was seen in the lung, occupying the upper half of the left lung. And again, these are the coronal and sagittal pictures showing the same thing. And this scan was done in May of 2004. And after the treatment in August of 2004, you can see the area of increased uptake has all disappeared. So the PET scan in this particular situation has helped us to confirm the effectiveness of treatment again. Besides helping us in staging the cancer, meaning what stage it is, whether it's metastasized or not, and number two, in terms of helping us determine whether the tumour is responding to treatment, that is a before and after pictures, the PET scan is also useful in helping us to follow up a patient to determine whether a patient has or does not have a cancer recurrence. This is especially important in an area whereby it may be scarred from your previous surgery or previous radiation. Because of the surgery and the, or the radiation, there may be some changes that are seen on a CT scan where you cannot be certain whether these changes are really due to your treatment or due to cancer recurrence. This is a very good case to illustrate. It is a situation where the patient has had prior surgery and also radiation. And now, through a PET scan, we can in actual fact detect a tumour recurrence that is just adjacent to the surgical site. So, it is very important in the follow-up of patients to consider when a PET scan may help us to uh, follow up and establish whether the patient is indeed disease-free or has a cancer recurrence. Because of the extreme costs involved in a PET-CT, the doctor must make a decision on who needs a PET scan and who doesn't need a PET scan. I think we'll be abusing technology if, let's say, for every patient who says, look, I'm, I'm worried, I'm neurotic, I'm a little bit concerned whether I've got cancer, and then I go for a PET-CT scan. That is called abuse. And in actual fact, what will end up 
is you'll be picking up a lot of what we call false positives. You see abnormality, which in actual fact is not significant. You increase the anxiety of patients, but at the end of the day, you don't really help anyone because you are, you are not using a PET scan appropriately. There are situations whereby a PET scan can help us to make a more accurate diagnosis. I would in actual fact recommend for all patients who have got lung cancer who are considering surgery to undergo a PET CT scan. By doing a PET scan, we may be able to detect disease which is otherwise not detectable on a CT scan and thereby upstage the cancer and make a surgery unnecessary or not helpful to the patient.